And that is the 100 reasons why you cannot go cave diving. Oh, okay. So guys, welcome back to the channel. So I've been stuck in this quarantine lockdown stuff for months now, since the beginning of April. And that means my Netflix and documentary consumption has gone way up. Uh, and all I really watch is scuba related content. So I've gone down the rabbit hole and been watching so many documentaries about cave diving and extreme tech diving. And I'm just fascinated. Underground caves and passages are the things of nightmares for most people and fascinating for other people. But there are some extreme cave divers and explorers that are true pioneers. There's very few places on our planet that are unexplored, the ocean being one and underground caves being another. So in today's video, I want to show five extreme cave dives that only the highly skilled, highly experienced divers can show us that are around the world. So let's get into that. Hmm? Critter Hunter. So number one is the Orta Cave, and this is in the Perm region of Russia, in the foothills of the Ural Mountains. This cave system is made up of gypsum, and because gypsum dissolves so quickly, it's really unknown how long and how intricate this cave system really is. Three miles have been explored so far, making it the longest cave in Russia and the longest gypsum cave in the whole world. Some parts of the cave open up into grand caverns over 250 feet wide and they're some of the most beautiful scenes ever when cave divers shine their light for the first time on these huge white wall caverns. It's just a really, really beautiful sight. Other parts of the cave are but tiny passages where experienced divers have to feed in their tanks one by one to get through and just wiggle and squeeze their way through. So it's definitely not for the claustrophobic. The beauty and the size of this cave in Russia makes it really worthy of this list. And I just have to tip my hat to those extreme cave divers that are the first humans to shine light on some of these areas ever in our history. So, thanks. Number two. So number two is the Chilhoi, Chilhoi Caves. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing the Chilhoi Caves, just like I will all the caves on this list. But nevertheless, it is an awesome cave to explore. So guys, a little side note. Uh, I am no way qualified to be a cave diver or a technical diver or anything like that. I guess I'm just a presenter. I mean, I have over 2,000 dives as a dive master in the nice, safe confines of no overhead environment and 40 meters or less. So don't get me wrong. Don't think I'm talking out of experience here, but I guess maybe I'm just a presenter of dive locations and species and things like that. I often talk of species that I am no way qualified to talk about. I mean, have you ever seen like space channels that talk about space and science? They're just space presenters. They're not astronauts. I guess I'm kind of something like that. So I'm just here to present you some awesome locations. If I get some information wrong, then don't attack me. I'm, I don't know anything. Actually, long ago, I mentioned the Chilhoi Cave in Zimbabwe on an article on my website. And ever since then, I've got so many emails asking me for information like how to get there, who to dive with, who can take them to the caves, what qualifications, like all that stuff. And I, I'm not the expert, but there's so little information online about these caves that, you know, any mention like my article, it just went to the top of Google so I'm getting so many emails I just figured I have to find this information and so I could tell people the caves are located in the Mashon land Mashon Mash Mashonaland West Province 
of Central Zimbabwe. So it'll be a trek to get to from most countries. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of South African divers that explore there because it's not a trek from there, but it's still, it's kind of a cool vacation. But these caves, there's a little something for everyone. They're probably the least advanced cave system on this list. Or not probably, they, they are. Um, regular divers can even dive here. There's a lot of caverns with no overhead environment. So they can explore these areas, but uh, cave divers and trimix divers, side mountain divers, they can also have fun here and do some narrow passages and get to other uh, huge caverns that are mostly underground, but some of them have small holes in the ceiling letting shafts of light through. Some of these caverns, the floors are littered with bones, human and animal. Uh, in other caverns, they have a bunch of coins from where people toss coins in for good luck. So, although this is the least extreme cave diving option on this list, it is super remote for most of the world and a really cool expedition. So, I did a little bit of research and if you want to dive or check out the, or even just swim, the Chinoy Cave, then your best bet is a dive center in Harare, the capital of Zimbabwe, called Scuba World. They do excursions to the Chinoy Caves and other places, so I think that's really your only option. Number three. So number three is the Cocklebitty, Co Cocklebitty Cave, Cocklebitty in Australia. The Cocklebitty Cave is one of many hundreds of caves that dot the Nullarbor, which is the largest area of limestone in the world. And the Cocklebitty is probably just the most famous and biggest one, especially for advanced cave explorers. The entrance to Cocklebitty Cave is a collapsed dolite or sinkhole, and it's created when the cave roof collapsed to reveal a system of massive underground caverns and more than six kilometers so far of underground passageways. So up until 1983, Cocklebitty was actually the world's longest cave at 6,300 meters. I mean, the record's been broken since then, but they're also still exploring more passageways and things like that. So it is definitely an awesome cave to get to and explore if you have the right qualifications. So you're gonna have to have a permit to dive this cave. And I mean, the logistics are a nightmare anyways. I mean, if you're coming from the States or Europe, you're obviously gonna be in a group. You're gonna need how many tanks? You're gonna need dozens of tanks per person. Uh, I mean, the Nollibor, I don't know if you guys know, but the Nollibor is that long, infamous, a uh, highway that goes through southwestern Australia through the Nullarbor uh, desert and it's super remote and deserty. I mean, people die just from breaking down on that highway and then nobody coming by. Uh, so it is super remote. You're not going to have tri-mix refill. You're not even going to have air compressors to refill air tanks. Uh, so, I mean, the logistics are going to be a nightmare. So the only really way to do this is to connect with the Australian Cave Diving Association or dive clubs there and get dive with them, get permits and everything through them and figure out all the crazy logistics. Uh, you know, they'll have maps and they'll know how to do it. Uh, and then and then you can go. But Cocklebitty, as big of a nightmare as it is to do, well, just like all the caves here, uh, is it's it's top of the list when it comes for exploring unknown regions of the world. Number four. So number four is the Dipolder Caves. Di Dipolder. You Florida guys are going to rip me a new one. I don't know how to pronounce it. I've never actually heard it said. Um, but yeah, the Deep Holder Caves in Florida. So these caves are going to be a far less trek for, for, for Americans at least, as it's only in Florida. And this is actually three caves, each with different levels of 
complication, I guess you will, would call it, or skill level needed. Uh, but they all, they all have little connections if you're qualified. These caves are out of Brooksville and are some of the deepest in the whole U.S. and are just beginning to be explored by those divers with the skills to make it happen. Some of these caves start as cenotes with relatively easy entries and others start with basically dry caves or dry cenotes where you have to rappel down just to get to the water for the entry. And yeah, they're also some of the deepest in the world, uh, well, in the U.S. And then once you're in any of the caves, they are pretty advanced and complicated cave systems and passageways that connect to each other out of the three caves. Not only will you be dealing with super narrow passages at times and overhead environments, you'll also be dealing with extreme depths. Some of these caves go from 60 meters up to 100 meters. So that just adds a whole nother level of complication to these caves. Definitely ones that I can't do. So if you're diving 100 plus meters in a cave, I hope you're qualified to deal with those stresses. <laughs> so just to get a permit to dive in these three caves, here are the minimal requirements. You must be full cave or equivalent trained through the National Association for Cave Diving or the Global Underwater Explorers. You must demonstrate a proof of a minimum of 100 cave dives after the completion of your full cave or equivalent training. You must possess appropriate Trimix certification or be under the direct supervision of a Trimix instructor. And you must be a member in good standing of the NSS CDS. And if you're going to be using a rebreather, you obviously need to be qualified for that. And they'll also give you a debriefing about conservation of delicate stalagmites and formations and all that. So you don't ruin that kind of stuff. So yeah, this cave is awesome for this video. I did tell you it wasn't going to be for the everyday diver, right? Number five. So last but not least is one that I'm definitely going to be mispronouncing is the Plura Grota cave near Rana, Norway. This cave system is one that I wouldn't even consider dipping your toes in if you don't have many, many years of cave diving and exploration experience and for good reason. Have you ever seen the documentary called Diving Into the Unknown? It is arguably the most insane scuba related documentary on the planet. And it's definitely my favorite. I've watched it a couple of times. And, well, this cave is the one that's featured in that documentary. So, spoiler alert. The documentary follows a Finnish team as they explore the cave, making the deep passage connection from Plura Grata to the dry cave of Steinagel Flagget. Steinagel Flagget. However you pronounce that. So during that first little dive at the beginning of the documentary, two of their team died. Actually, one guy died in the passage and that kind of blocked it all up and another guy died and three others got super bad injured. Super badly, badly injured. Yeah. And, and barely made it out alive. So two guys died deep in this cave and then expert cave divers and recovery teams from the uk and us all came and tried to recover the bodies and they couldn't do it they said it was they, they deemed it impossible so the documentary really starts where the same finnish team the ones that survived they planned out how they were going to recover their friends bodies and they they went back which by now the cave was uh shut down by the Norwegian government. It was illegal to dive because of these deaths. So they snuck back in there. And th yeah, the, the, the documentary is about how they recovered the bodies. And it is super, it's the most insane cave dive I've ever seen. Um, and it was so complicated. If I had one gripe about the documentary, it's that they didn't really show how complicated this dive really is. 
I mean, just getting down to the dry cave was hours of uh, trekking down a cave, basically. And on the other end, where they start, you had they had to get a snowmobile and for hours take all their gear to this little hole. Then they had to chainsaw a giant hole in the ice, thick, thick ice. And then they can dive. That's their entry. And but the not only are they diving in ice cold water, the deep passage where it starts to go vertical and where their friends died and where it connects to the dry cave was actually over 130 meters deep. So you can imagine how complicated this dive is. I mean, I can't imagine a worse place on earth to be narked. You know, a tiny little passageway where your tanks are getting messed up and stuck and you have to take three or four of them off and squeeze them through a little narrow passageway while you're at 130 meters deep for a very extended amount of time. Yeah, it's just a nightmare. That's why those British teams just deemed it impossible to do. Uh, but they actually succeeded, but it was, it's, it, you just need to watch the documentary. And actually, after all this, the Norwegian government finally uh, legalized diving there again in like 2014, I think. So you could actually go there, but you better have some serious, serious skills before you even try it. Because I've never seen anything so extreme. So... I think that's it, you guys. That is five extreme caves that you can dive if you are experienced enough. Uh, but the rest of us can definitely dream about and highly appreciate you guys that get to map and photograph and make films about these super awesome underground caves that almost nobody in the whole world gets to see. So there you have it. If you guys think this was a little bit too complicated for the everyday diver, let me know. Let me know if you want me to do a video about cenotes and little less advanced caves that anybody can do. Uh, I have a list of those from around the world, not just Mexico. Uh, so let me know if you want me to do a video about that. So there you have it, guys. If you are a cave diver and you've dove in any of these five caves, let me know. I want to hear your story. Maybe we can do an interview or something. I just love these stories. So until then, make sure you have subscribed and I'll see you on the next one. Bye. Yeah. Subscribe.